case football? It is on us. Let's give Brother Aaron a round of applause. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Aaron. We love you so much. Elder Charlie, you didn't have to hurry up, man. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel so bad. It's like, hey, where you going? Uh, as you guys know, on a Wednesday evening, we got a lot going on here in God's house. Praise God. We got the young adults here in the prayer room. You feel led to go there, please go. They welcome you. They, they love you. Um, we're, just, uh, we're just loving on the young adults and um, just really want to bless them as far as with breakthrough and how Holy Spirit has just been flowing in that ministry. Also upstairs, we got um, the youth. Always keep uh, Pastor Mary and Pastor Tish in prayer in there as well. God bless them. Hallelujah. I mean, talk about, yeah, that's right. That's something else. Amen. Um, our worship uh, service this evening is uh, simply titled Gooder and Gooder in Jesus' Name. Uh, this is one of the services that I was um, very, very uh, blown away as far as how God put this together. And we're going to be in Galatians 5, for those of you who have your Bible. And we're going to go through all of Galatians 5. And uh, so pray with me because um, Father God wants us to uh, produce his presence always. Can I get an amen? amen. Always. And there, there's, there's a lot of question or concern like, well, why, why, I am, why am I emotionally unbalanced? That's a big one. Pastor, why do I have just such horrible thoughts that I know it's evil, but I continuously have these thoughts that try to torment me? Pastor, why do I lie a lot? Why, why am I always lying? I, I, I feel like I can't control it. Beloved child of God, as long as you have Lord Jesus Christ, you can control it. Can I get an amen? Um, Pastor, why, why, do, why am I always drawn to do this certain thing when I know it's not right. Uh, this is just some of, of, of the few things that God wants to address with all of us tonight. And we're just going to stick in Galatians 5 and just allow Holy Spirit to teach us. Amen. Say with me. Teach me, Lord. You see, he's the only teacher. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for you guys being here. God is good? All the time? It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, so we're going to just jump right into this, okay? In Galatians 5, starts like this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Say it with me. I'm free. So here, here's number one. If you notice that, it just says be up there. Will you choose tonight to be free? To be free. God's love, to be the apple of his eye, to be, auntie, you said it, and I was just going to say that, that's all Holy Spirit, to be his favorite, right? I love that because we just started, you know, we started joking around here lately, and, you know, we like to say that, I'm his favorite. See, I love that. The whole room, the whole room got crunchy, right? But a godly, a godly crunchy, because like some, you, some of you don't even say nothing, you just point. You're like, that's how bold you are in Christ. No, nope, it's right here, right here, right? But, you know, even though you guys act goofy, I know that I'm his favorite. <laughs> Pastor, I might need to hand you the mic, because I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But when you choose to be, that means that you made a decision, Brother William, that no matter what happens... Uh, come on now. No matter how I feel, no matter what I go through, no matter what I face, no matter how I'm treated, can I get an amen? amen? No matter what somebody says about me, no matter who's gossiping, no matter who's trying to start a war with me, I'm going to choose to be. You see, I believe that we lose something of such significance when we call upon the most holy of holy names. His name is Jesus Christ. I believe that the devil does something to us 
that we lose reverence for that name. We lose fear for that name, Brother David. We lose something. But God gives us the ability, Brother David, through his Holy Spirit to fight and take what the enemy has stolen. The beauty about this is that when you take back what the enemy has stolen from you, you have the authority and the ability to not only take back what the devil stole, but to also lay the smack down on the devil for messing with you to begin with. Can I get an amen? Mm. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me, and I took back what he stole from me, and I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Satan, he's under my feet. Amen? Give God praise. Hallelujah. We have to have that authority in Christ to establish our identity even when everything around you is crumbling. I, uh, I hurt some people this weekend, and I hurt somebody today. And it's all in obedience to the Lord. But see, what I confess to you guys is I'm a human being. I love, I, I love having my church family tight. I don't want any wolves in here. I speak it out. You can ask pastor. I speak it out. If there's a wolf, is there, if there's someone that's evil that tries to come in these doors, that God, for one main thing, that God would show him or her love. And that we do our part and love that person. But hear my heart, family. If this wolf, if this evil thing chooses to think that they could be in God's house, in his holy place, and run a mess, listen to the words I speak. I pray that Father God uproots, uh, I mean, I'm talking about uproots them to the point where they are just completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. Why do I pray this way? Because they have to get right with God. They're not allowed to come here and bring division and gossip and all that stuff. And guess what? Just because by if they leave here, they're not going to go to another church and do that garbage there. You know what I'm saying? It stops right here. Can I get an amen? It stops right. Say it with me. It stops right here. So this is the power that you have in Christ. When you choose to be... When you know that you are a beloved child of God, when you know what was done on that cross, say it with me, for me. It becomes so personal in your walk and relationship, it's no longer a, a religion. It's no longer a, well, it's a Wednesday evening, I got to go to church. It's not that anymore. It's a divine appointment every time the doors are open here in your holy church that I have an appointment with God Almighty, and I'm going to come because I am his beloved child. And he wants to speak to me. Amen? He wants to work through me. He want, How many of you know God wants to bless you? Every hand goes up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He wants to bless you. You don't believe it. Guess what? Look at this big old hand. I'm just going to take it right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, my goodness. The sad part is there's some in there. Don't get crunchy with me. You didn't want it. Amen? It's done paid for. Well, I, didn't know, I didn't know that preacher was going to do that. I, I, want, I, want, I want my blessings back. Well, maybe next time you act right. Don't be crunchy. Huh? Act right. Amen? Uh, what denomination is this church? And last church I was at, nobody touched my blessings. Well, I'll take it. I'm going to come back later ask if you got more. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's get into this. Stand firm them and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Say with me, I am free. Say with me, I'm no longer a slave. This is being encouraging in your walk, in your relationship with God. When you choose to be who you are in Christ, does that mean that your last name defines who you are? Well, let me ask you something. This is, really, this is really big here in Kentucky. I'm not teasing y'all in Kentucky. I've been here for a while now. But this is big, and I hear this a lot. 
Well, I don't know him, but I know his granddaddy and his great granddaddy and the granddaddy. And I tell you what, I noticed that that great 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 daddy, he was good for nothing. And leave it up to an islander to be like this. What? I'm just wondering if you know Mark. Oh, I know his daddy, and I know his granddaddy, and the great 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 daddy, and I know that they good for nothing. What does that have to do with anything? Can I get an amen? What does that have to do with anything? Listen, if you play a part of that, you need to get up at this altar and repent. You know why? You're, you're leaving the door wide open. This is what you do when you gossip about people or you spread lies and you try to break up people. This is what you're doing. Satan, devils, it's wide open. Just come on in my house, do whatever you want. And then on top of that, because I know your fruit, say it with me, fruit. On top of that, because I know your fruit, you run your mouth like there's no accountability to God Almighty. And then now you're going to blame God for all the mess that's happening in your house. Yeah. Say it with me, please. No more. Listen, I love you. Thank you. One person, praise God. And I love you, Sister Kathy. I do. I love you. And I thank God for that. Amen. You know those blessings I took earlier? I'm going to give you half of them. I'm going to give you half of them. Why you take them all? Oh, okay, praise God. We have to. We have to be alert. Amen. There is that word be again. Say it with me, be. Amen. For God so loved the world. Listen. This is going to sound mean and cruel. I don't care anymore because the time is almost up. Okay, that time is almost up. I can't care for the whole world. Can you hear me? I can't. I'm lifted. I pray for the world. I do. I pray for, I pray for all the babies and souls right now that are taking their last breath that they may know Lord Jesus Christ. I do. I pray for them. But the world ain't my business. So guess what? I changed that scripture for God so loved me. That he gave me Jesus. So if you choose to be love, then it all comes together, right? I am his beloved. Amen? Are you his beloved? Are you his beloved? See, there's somebody tonight right now that's like, man, he's really spending a lot of time on this and it's starting to get annoying good. That means it's working. That, that means it's getting through your crunchy cell. How many of you, how many was raised and, and, and whoever raised you said you good for nothing? I thought that was my middle name. I mean, right? Well, guess what? When you're young, you start believing things like that. But here in my heart, there's some people who are older as Christians, covered by the blood of Jesus, and they still believe that. You can feel it in Holy Spirit right now, right? We're worshiping Lord Jesus. He's right here. But guess what? It takes you to repent and confess to God that I did you wrong, Father. Well, Pastor, how did I do God wrong? How did I offend them? You did not realize your value when you called on the name of Lord Jesus Christ. You did not realize that when you called on the holiest name, that his blood covered you and that you're his daughter. You're no longer trash. You're no longer that, 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 that man that had all these problems. You're no longer an addict. You're no longer somebody that, that, that's struggling health-wise. You know why? You're healed. Come on, say it with me. I'm healed. It's amazing to me because some people don't see the manifestation of God's glory in healing. Why? Because they're programmed from the devil from this world that, oh, I need to at this time take all this medication because if I don't, I don't know how to act. Guess what? You, you bought into what the devil's lying to you about. Listen, doctor tell you something to do? Yes, listen to the doctor. But at least have enough common sense to pray to the Lord and ask him. I know what the doctor said, Father God. I love, I love you for blessing the doctor and giving him wisdom. But doc, the, the doctor said, I have all this wrong. I know that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Woo! 
Hallelujah. So we got being encouraging. Amen. We got a lot to go through. Pray for me. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Let me pause right there. What's taking place in the church of Galatia that Paul was facing is that there's many that called on the name of Lord Jesus Christ that said that got saved, but then now they're going back to the traditional re religious ways of worshiping God. Meaning, they said, okay, I got you, Jesus. I received you, Jesus. I'm saved. But then this is what they did with Lord Jesus. And then they went back to the old. Can you imagine what an insult that is? Can you imagine what an insult that is? To a God-fearing, beloved child of God, would you ever allow somebody to do that? In your household, would you ever allow somebody to do that? No. Right? No. I would never allow somebody in our church to do that. But guess what? They make this choice, and I talk to them. Guess what? They're mad at me. They're mad at the world. It's everybody else's fault. And they go on. Why? Because it eats them up. Right? And this is what was happening to the church in Galatia. They were starting to get eat up. Showing bad fruit. Showing horrible fruit. And so he had, to, he had to lay it out there and say, look, don't talk about being circumcised no more. Don't talk about doing all this stuff because of the old. Lord Jesus Christ came, so there's no longer any requirement to have circumcision, speaking to the men. Why? Because men were saying, well, I have Jesus, but guess what they were doing? Behind closed doors, in worship services, gossiping. Oh, well, you know, Brother Craig claims to be a Christian, but he didn't get circumcised, William. Hmm. And all it takes is for somebody else, maybe William, maybe David comes over and David's like, hey, did you know Craig claims to be a Christian? Claim, he claims to be one of us, but he didn't get circumcised. Does that not sound like our churches now these days? Huh? We don't change. The only way we can change is through his presence. How many of you are ready? Truly, how many of you are ready to see Jesus Christ eyeball to eyeball? Amen. I'm going to pray for you, brother, because I love you. I'm going to pray for you. What's your name? Daryl. I'm going to pray for, pray for Daryl. He didn't raise his hand, so I don't know where he's going. Listen, I'm just this kind of brother right now. I care where he goes for eternity. Did you know hell is a place where he can look up and see? Is Rosie your wife? I pray so, because if it wasn't, this would be a weird situation right here. <laughs> right. And listen, I'm not throwing nothing on you. Listen to me. Uh, this is what I'm saying. Hell is a real place. Right? Hell is a real place. Amen? You know what hell is like? But you want to hear something else? It's for eternity. You want to hear something else? If I go to hell, I will be able to see Trish in heaven. As I'm screaming out for eternity. And guess what? She will not have one clue who I am. So, of course, we pray for Brother Daryl. We pray for every soul that we don't know if they're going to heaven, hell. We don't, I'm going to pray. Brother Daryl gets mad at me. He doesn't want to come back no more. That's between you and the Lord, brother. I love you. And I pray you know that. I love you. I am saying we have to get right. We don't know if we're going to be alive tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to make it home tonight. I don't know. And if i got to be this brother that you're going to be mad at, and then oh, well. But what are we doing? We know that Jesus died on that cross, a horrible death. And I cannot be one of these people that don't have reverence. And I have to fear God. Do you? See, some of y'all fear the doctors more than you fear God. Some of y'all fear that bill more than you do God. Mm. Some people who say they fear God, but yet they can run their mouth about a brother or sister in Christ. Run straight the gossip, cussing. Yeah, I put that in there. You don't fear God. You're a liar. Oh, you're mad at me now? Take it up with the boss. Because guess what? When I stand before God, I have to answer, yes, Lord, I said it. You told me to say it, I said it. 
You say you fear God, but yet you're looking at pornography? Are we talking now? God sees everything. He knows everything. Family, I get so many visions and dreams of when that trumpet sounds. And yes, hallelujah, we all go when that trumpet, hallelujah, when that trumpet sounds. If Jesus is your Lord, you will be raptured out of here. But what you don't see, uh, what you don't see or what you will see now, what I'm going to communicate to you, is I've seen the aftermath. When that trumpet goes off and God's people goes home, there are going to be so many people committing suicide because they thought they were going. And they cannot stand the fact that their wife left, their husband. Let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about this, that when that trumpet sounds, all the babies are gone? Oh, now, now we're talking. Some of you guys are like, what? Aren't the babies innocent? Aren't the babies, aren't the babies angels? Aren't the babies pure? So let me ask you something. How serious is this? I've seen planes fall out of the sky. I've seen buildings blown up all over the place, all over the world. I've seen organizations formed, militias formed. I've seen people just run in the streets, killing people, raping people, murdering people. I've seen the government so overwhelmed. I know, Brother Tim, this is close to your heart because you serve the Lord in that capacity. Can you imagine serving a police force or, you know, trying to protect the public during these times? Beloved family, it's time that we're so sensitive making sure that our lives reflect God's fruit. That our lives show his presence. Does your marriage show God's presence? Are you a man of God? Do you truly keep God first? Are you protecting your wife by worshiping God Almighty and blessing God to put a hedge of protection in your house? Or are you a coward? You want to play church and let your wife do everything? Women of God, are you, are, are you a wife of God? Meaning, are you there for your husband, speaking life over your husband? Not gossiping, not complaining? Huh? Not doing all this garbage on social media? Huh? You see how deep it gets in our relationship with the Lord? It's amazing because, see, we can see each other Monday night, Tuesday night, here it is Wednesday night, hallelujah. Be heavy in the word of God. Allow Holy Spirit to bless us with his presence as we always do. You know, come back on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. But my question is, what's happening outside of these walls, outside of this door? Right? Where are we at? Are we so consumed as far as with the job or with the money? Listen, God wants you blessed. All I'm asking of you is, where are your priorities? Now, here in my heart, I can't control your priorities. Like I told Brother Daryl, all I can do is pray for you all, right? All I can do is speak the truth, whether you like it or not. We, that's why we go through Scripture and we allow Holy Spirit to speak the truth. And I pray that in His presence, God will make changes if, if we allow Him. Did you know this? You have to allow God... To make changes in you. He won't just do it on his own. You have to allow God 
to make the changes. Will you allow him to? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are y'all still happy? Praise God. You, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Say it with me. Fallen away from grace. Amen. How do you fall away from grace being a new covenant child of God? It's as simple as this. Whatever problem, distraction, whatever, thing, whatever that's coming your way, if you put that above Lord Jesus Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. I hear this a lot. Well, Brother Joey, God is a God of grace. Yes, he is. But he has equipped you on how to access this grace with full authority. Who gives you the authority to access this grace to live abundantly? Say his name. You already beat me, Brother William. Lord Jesus Christ. So let me ask you something. If you're faced with something, you know, if you're faced with something that is, that is just causing a bunch of torment, maybe just family problems, maybe it's your children, maybe your children ain't acting right. Testify. How many of you, how many of you have been through that? See, you're not alone, right? You're not alone. Maybe your child ain't acting right. It's those situations right there that the enemy is hoping that you make your child the center of attention. That your child just, just takes up all of your attention, all of your might, all of your power. But where grace is, is when you look at that child and you say, you know what, I love you. There's going to be consequences for how you're acting and what you're doing. But I'm going to tell you right now, in Jesus' name, we're going to make a change together. Amen? When you choose to make a change together, get ready. When you choose to make a change together with your family... Get ready. How does this apply to a marriage? A marriage that's struggling. A Christian marriage that's struggling. I will tell you right away, the eyes fell away from Jesus, and now they're just looking at each other. Plum mad at each other. You used to look at them with eyes of mercy and grace and love, right? And now you look at them, and it's like, man, I'm just so sick of you. I'm just preaching the truth. The question is, why all of a sudden are you so sick of that person that at one point you just were deeply in love with. There's been a change of focus, right? And so God gives us this access to grace boldly when we eliminate looking at your spouse, looking at your children, looking at the bills, and just look at Jesus. Because when you look at Jesus, what Holy Spirit does in you is his presence will start to what I like to say, overflow. And when his anointing starts to overflow in you, what he does is he reminds you, regardless how mad you are at your husband or at your wife or at your children or maybe at your job, right, maybe an employer, whatever it is, he reminds you what Lord Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. You see, nothing, say it with me, nothing, nothing, nothing can trump what God did on the cross for you and me. Amen. Amen? Nothing can. Nothing can. Well, I've been through this, I've been through that. Look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, well, you just don't know what I'm going through, brother. I don't, but look at Jesus. May I tell you right now, we're living in such a fallen, perverse world right now. Some people get upset when I just tell them that. Well, you're just not listening to me, Joey. I, that's why I didn't want to talk to you to begin with. I knew you were just going to do that. He is the answer. I'm sorry. You wanted somebody that you could just, no pun intended, but throw up on and just go, oh, thank you. Thank you for throwing up on me. We'll do this again next week. Or do you want to be healed from that thing? Can I get an amen? Amen. I pray in Jesus' name that you want healing, that you want his best. Can I get an amen? amen? For through the spirit we eagerly await the faith, the righteousness for which we hope. Say with me, agape. agape. You guys know what agape is, right? Okay. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. There, there, there Paul goes again. Paul's saying, listen, you guys got to get this through your head. You're bringing up the old and don't get God mad. Don't upset God. 
Don't insult Lord Jesus Christ. Don't deny his Holy Spirit. Call out his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. See, right now, what, what the Apostle Paul is calling out is agape. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen? Can you break them up? So you're telling me that I can't go to God without Jesus? So you're telling me that I can't have Holy Spirit without Jesus? Right? They're all together. Amen? And this is what he's saying. He says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself. Say it with me, through love. Through love. Through love. Say it again, through love. through love. So when we know that this is agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you can see how Father God loved me through his written word in the Holy Bible. Say it with me, through. through. How, did, how did God love me through the old, old Covenant, Old Testament? He sent Jesus. This is how God went through the word. If you're taking notes, write that down. This is how God went through the pages of the book. See, everybody's so fixated on the words written. So good that they memorized everything. But then want nothing to do with God. So the actual word itself became alive. His name is, say with me, Jesus. So Jesus being the word of God alive, Lord Jesus shows us God's glory and how much he loves us. Lord Jesus frees us from all the things that we've done in the past because we never wanted a relationship with God Almighty. But guess what? It gets gooder and gooder because Jesus, he wanted us to become alive through his word. So you can see it in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the only way Lord Jesus Christ could make us alive in his word, being the only word, the Son of God, is he had to die. And in his death, in his death, he says, anyone who would call on my name, Brother Daryl, anyone who would call on my name, Lord Jesus Christ, God says, you will die in him. And he will give you eternal life. Can I get a hallelujah? He made, he made it real simple, didn't he? We're the ones that complicate everything, don't we? You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. This is the wolves. This is the evil people. This is religious nuts. These are people that just don't want nothing to do with Holy Spirit. They just want to come in and they just want to create confusion. And, and this is what Paul said. It's, it's, a, it's a, a little yeast that works through the whole batch. If you, don't take, if, if you don't take care of this, it becomes a problem. Right? How many of you ever had something infected? Right? Now, isn't the, isn't the thing that... Sometimes you may have to take medication to get into your blood screen, bloodstream to clean it out, right? But you notice that the doctor always tells you, make sure it's clean so it doesn't get infected, right? And this is how we stay clean as Christians. We're always thanking God for Lord Jesus Christ. Always. Say it with me, always. always. You're always focused on what God did for you. Why are you always focused on this? It doesn't take a preacher to tell you this is your, your, your God-given identity. This is who you are. This is your existence as a child of God. Once again, I asked you earlier, are you your last name or are you a child of God? So being that child of God, what is your right? What did Lord Jesus Christ bless you with? What kind of rights did Lord Jesus Christ give you? What kind of authority, what kind of power did he give you? Did Lord Jesus Christ say when he left, well, you guys are going to be hurting. You guys really can't do anything great because I'm leaving. Or did he say you guys are going to do greater things? How many of you believe that tonight? Can I get a hallelujah? See, it's time. It's time that we start displaying Holy Spirit rather than number one. 
If you're taking notes, write this down. Rather than number one, being fake with God. Because I'll tell you right now, you could fool everybody, but you can't fool God. And right now, God is asking you, my beloved child, will you just be real with me? Just be transparent with me. Number two, confess your sins. Confess them. Speak them out. Here in a little bit, we're going to have an altar call. We're going to just have one song playing. Pastor John's going to be here, but I'm going to be here up here. Brother David, Elder Howard. If you need to confess your sins, confess them. The beauty about this is that it's up to you. You can't tell me, what, God, why didn't you? No, God is telling you, you need to confess your sins. You did some people wrong. You hurt some people. You tried to brush it up under the rug. It doesn't work like that. Can I get an amen? It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for the agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Apostle Paul is just rebuking all these religious people coming against our Lord Jesus Christ. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Say with me, I am free. I am free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out. Or you will be destroyed by each other. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, repentance. This is how repentance works. So I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit... What is contrary to the flesh? They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen? The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual morality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy. Drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you. Say with me, I'm warned. As I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Beloved family, once again, I say this in, in just being accountable to the Lord. I don't care what kind of messages you've heard in the past. I don't care about this love movement that's going on and people saying that God will just, you know, accept everything and everybody's in heaven. This right here tells me that if your life reflects any of that what we just read in the word of God, God said you will not inherit the kingdom of God. As you can tell, the tone in this message is one with fear. I fear only God Almighty. I don't fear you. I don't fear anybody. I, I only fear God Almighty. And the fear that I have for God is he wants every soul that we can possibly reach. And he wants that soul to make the decision. Amen? Amen. He wants that soul to make the decision. Um, let's give God praise that Brother Daryl is here. Amen. Let's just. <laughs> hallelujah. You know what that shows? Victory in Jesus. Amen. Victory to God's beloved, to his wife. It shows that he loves. Amen. Amen. But hear my heart. Can I save Daryl? Can you? Can Rosie? Who's the only man that can? Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's give him praise. Amen. He made it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Read this with me. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, and self-control. Is that not just gooder and gooder? I mean, just reading those things just make you feel good. Amen? Say it with me. Be encouraging. This is the encouragement that Father God wants from your life. We say it all the time. If you've been here for a while, you, re- you know me. Put a smile on your face. Right? Put a smile on your face. Oh, I've been saved 32 years. Tell your face that. I mean, I've had to tell people that. You know what I mean? You've been saved that long and you look that crunchy? If I was saved that long, I'd be like, hallelujah, God is good. And he is head over heels in love with you. See, nothing can change that about our God. He loves you. And he wants to be for you. He wants to be. The question that I have for you, family, is are you for God? Oh, man, that was a curveball to some people. I just saw it right now. Well, I'm a, I'm a Christian, Pastor. I'm not asking you that. I'm not asking you that. Well, I'm here tonight. I'm not asking you that. When I ask you, are you for God, what do you meditate on in your thoughts? Is it holy? What's going on in your heart? What pulls you? Is it fellowship with other brothers and sisters to glorify Jesus? Or is it to go turn on that computer in the back room when nobody's looking and to look at stuff you're not supposed to look at because it's playing filth, garbage, and evil? It's basically Satan on your computer. Amen. It is. How about this? What's going on your what's going on in this? Are you taking care of this? Is it God's temple? Or is it the hospital's temple? Oh, but there's some of you right now that's acting kind of confused. I'm kind of questioning that. Once again, I'm not coming against the doctors. I'm not coming against your health. I'm coming against the liar, the thief, the deceiver that is telling you that you're not healed when you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Can I get an amen? Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter how I feel. That's how Satan that, that, that's how Satan tries to get to me. If you don't feel it, I don't care. I don't need a feeling. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen, if you wait for the feeling, it ain't ever gonna happen. But if you make the choice, get ready, the feeling will come. Hallelujah. When you make the choice to serve Jesus, guess what? The feeling will come, and it just gets gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Say with me, agape. agape. So we saw this earlier, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This talks about the life of God, the death of God, and the resurrection of God. Can I get an amen? amen? But then when you talk about being crucified in Christ, you're looking at your life story. You're looking at your life When I lived life like a fool and the devil deceived me and I had all this anger because of all these things that was done wrong to me and I didn't forgive. So then I lived life thinking that I just had to just get it my way or there was no way. You know what I'm talking about? I I, I try to live life because I thought that life was what it was, but it was all a deception of the devil trying to keep all these strings on me like a little puppet. But glory be to God. Say it with me, but Jesus. There's this perfect man named Lord Jesus Christ that never gave up. And I called on his holy name. What happened to me? I died in him. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. And now when you died in him, God promises the same resurrection power is alive in you if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord. That same Resurrection power. So how are you using it, boo-boo? How are you using this God power of yours? Huh? How? I try to go to church at least once a week. I'm not asking you that, Crunchy. Are 
I try to make it to church at least once a month. You need to get up at this altar. Listen, if I'm fired after tonight, Elder Howard said, good. Because you know what? I just got to be obedient to the Lord and tell you what everything Holy Spirit has for me. We need to make some changes, church. We need to make some changes. You have the anointing, the power. How are you using it? How many of you knew that you had this power? Show of hands. So how are you using it? Hmm? How are you using this power? How are we bringing others to God? Praying for them. What else? Speaking his word. How do we speak his word? Through love. How do we show this love? Hmm? So what about when the wife gets you upset? When the wife gets you upset, how do you show this love? When Trish gets me upset, how do I show this love? Refrain from talking negative. That's awesome. Beloved, what do you say? Remember Jesus. Can I get a hallelujah? Brother David says, zip it up. Amen. You see, don't you love this? How Holy Spirit just flowing through us as his body. And he's encouraging us how to fight this fight. Because I can have every right to be upset if she done something wrong. And I could say, why, why would you have that attitude? What are you doing? All that does, it speaks filth and calls out all the demons to come and start attacking. And the entire time, how many of you agree? God already did the perfect work. He give you all the power, right? He give you all the power, amen? Let's choose not to do that anymore, amen? Say this with me, repentance. We're close. Praise God. Father held time, Pastor. Hallelujah. I thought, I thought I was going to look at my watch and it would be like 9 o'clock. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Keep on. We're going to sum it up. Praise God. We're going to close everything up. Since we live by the Spirit, say with me, I am free. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. The only way you can keep in step with the Spirit is you have to be focused on Lord Jesus Christ. I love what Brother David said. He said it for over four years now. And I know he'll say it for eternity. I'm going to try to copy Brother David's voice because it's so anointed. But he says, I want to, brother, I want to follow Jesus where his heels are just hitting my chin. <laughs> Did I do it right? And I pray that we all have that anointing. Because when you follow Lord Jesus that close, you know that you're walking in step. With Holy Spirit. And you know, the beauty is, you know that it's already tested. Because he was already there. Amen? He goes before us. So the, as long as you keep it, it don't matter what it doesn't matter what it looks like. Why? Because my Lord was already here. Amen. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Let's don't do that, right? Let, let's not, let's not. Let's not get each other upset. Let's not talk about each other. That has been a big thing for this past month. Right, Pastor? God has convicted us as pastors, as leaders. Listen, I'm not telling you that Pastor's done it. He, didn't say one, he never said one thing bad about me for over four years. Not one thing. But I know that when we have the conviction, something's going on. And God hates it. He hates gossip. He hates people who just wants to start rumors or, or just run their mouth. Listen, stop talking about other people. If you're one of these people right now, you need to repent at this altar and tell God you're not going to do it no more. Because I promise you in Jesus' name, if you keep on doing it, death is right at your door. I've seen it. And God does not want any of his children to go down that road. Pastor, why is this so important? Why do you ride this subject so hard? Lord Jesus Christ, in John 1, he is the word of God. So when you speak a word against God, can you imagine what you're doing to God Almighty? Use these words as a tool of life, as a tool of blessing, 
as a tool of healing. Amen? I want, I, I want to be able to be around you all and just know that I could just relax and be in God's presence and not have to worry about somebody having diarrhea of the mouth. Amen. You know what diarrhea of the mouth is? Huh? You know what diarrhea of the mouth is? Hey, brother, um, I notice you don't look too well right now. Are you not feeling too well? Oh, you know, I went to the doctor last week, and I saw the same thing happen, and they said that this is going on with this person, and you're going to need to go back to the doctor. And What in the world? Are you a doctor or a Christian? See, some of you do that. You know why I caught you? And I rebuked it. But now God is putting it out saying, stop talking like that. You see a brother hurting? Brother, I noticed something. Come over here. Let me anoint you in oil. We're going to believe healing right now in Jesus' name. That's it. Amen. Oh, but it really hurts when I go like this. Stop doing it. God, make it so simple. Oh, brother Joey, just... Why are you walking around like this? Right? Listen, I'm glad we're towards the end of this where Holy Spirit says the hard part's over. And I thank you, God, I thank you guys for your obedience and worship and pressing through. Amen? Seriously, I don't, I don't want my enemies to go to hell. Well, Pastor, you got some enemies? Yeah, I got some, I got some enemies. I love them, but I got some enemies. God said I have to love everybody. Amen? But I got some enemies. I got some enemies that are against Jesus, that are against Holy Spirit. Come on now, somebody. Don't try to act holier than me. God loves me as much as he loves you. Can I get an amen? amen? So guess what? I love them. I still pray for them. But yeah, because you know why? They're enemies of God. Amen. An enemy of God can't be my friend. I'm, I mean, some of y'all look at me like I got three eyeballs right now. Who are you hanging out with? Right? We got to make sure that we're blessing Holy Spirit. Amen. Say with me, bless him, Lord. So we talk about agape, amen. Say with me, encouraging and be. And this spells out what I like to say, bear. Well, because Galatians 5 talks about bearing fruit, right? Say with me, bear fruit. And so in this title of, uh, praise God, thank you for this, Father God. As we bear fruit, you can see all the fruits of the Lord right there in the cross. So many people are focused on bearing fruit here in my heart family that they actually manifest the wrong thing. May I say that again? So many Christians are so focused on trying to bear the fruit of God that they actually start manifesting anger, judgment, gossip, hate, crunchiness. You know why? Their focus is not on Christ. Their focus is on trying to get the fruit. We have to change our focus in blessing our perfect Savior and allowing Holy Spirit to produce the fruit within us. Amen. We have to have such a focus on Christ. I mean, I'm talking about such a focus, such a focus, an intense focus on, on God that God knows everything you're going through, beloved. God knows the crunchy people around your life. God knows the situation. God knows everything that's happening right now. He is God Almighty. But here's the beauty. When we have that intense focus on Christ in worship, Holy Spirit now will start producing the fruit. And in his fruit, the glory of God, his light, will pierce through darkness. And as his presence pierces through darkness, he will change your next breath. He will change your next day. He will change the environment around you. And it's all because you choose to focus and his fruit is just overflowing within your life. Amen. How many of you received that tonight? Amen. Amen. Stand up with me. Praise God. When you have this focus on Lord Jesus... This is what Father God wanted me to show you, and I pray it blesses you. Because it just gets gooder and gooder. Can I get an amen? amen? How many of you truly believe that as a child of God right now, your life is getting gooder and gooder? Amen. Take the time to look around, family. Look at all the testimonies. 
I love it. Sister Lisa's like, no, you need to see my hand. My life gets gooder and gooder. Look at Elder Howard back there. When you focus on Christ this way, I promise you in Jesus' name, 100% guarantee, Holy Spirit will bless your life in the gooder and gooder. Well, Pastor, how, what kind of focus does this take? I'm glad you asked because I want to show you. <laughs> this right here is the gooder and gooder. Can I get an amen? amen. This right here, how, come on now. How much gooder and gooder can that be right there? Talk about bear fruit. That bear, that bear is loving life in every rock. Amen. And guess what? As he rocks, this is, oh, there goes some fruit. Oh, there goes some more fruit. Hallelujah. Oh, there's more love right there. Oh, joy, peace, kindness. Guess what? Look at all the fruit that come out of that right there. So, so will, you, will, you, will you be like that panda bear? Huh? Would you be like that panda bear no matter what's going on in your life right now? No matter how people are acting? No matter what's happening around you? Come on. Let's be like that panda bear and let's just rock back and forth. And that's all we're doing is Jesus. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. And you could tell, like that right there, you could tell Father God's like, that's, that's pretty awesome. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Elder, <laughs> our brother said, I want the horse. <laughs> God lays it on your heart to come. Just come up front. Let's, uh, let's just bless him. Once again, if you have something to confess, um, pastor or elders are here, our deacons are here. Um, I need you to know, whatever you confess, hear my heart, because you're talking about overseers of the church. We don't say one word to each other. It's only between us and God. And we pray for you. It is forgotten. It is forgiven by the, through the blood of the Lord Jesus. Amen. But get that off your chest in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to the altar. Hallelujah.